Hi, this is John Mello here, and I've got my grandson, Bo Mello. And, uh, and today we're going to talk about healing. And, uh, and what I teach that Jesus wants to heal, use everyone to heal the sick. Uh, and my grandson, Bo, he loves praying for the sick people, and he, he's starting to train others to pray for the sick. Now, now Bo, Bo, why is it important for, for your children to pray for the sick? Well, it's important for children to pray for the sick because it's showing that no matter how young you are, Jesus will still use you. He doesn't care if you're an adult, if you're young. He doesn't care about your background. And, and but what's the most important thing to do to pray for the sick? What's the most important thing to believe? The most important thing to believe is that Jesus is real. You're not praying to some other God like, say, Buddhist or something. You, you're praying to the one and only God for Him to heal. Not you. You're not the one healing. God is. So with Jesus the healer. So so how do we know that Jesus is the healer? How we know? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but the way that I remember is, if I say, "Be healed," without saying in the name of Jesus or something, without saying in the name of Jesus, um, it's nothing's gonna happen. Say you had, um, like a cut on your arm, and I went be healed <laughs> nothing would happen but if I went in the name of Jesus be healed your cut has would most likely disappear so it's, a, it's really important that we understand that Jesus is a healer and it's only in his name not by our own strength or power it's true isn't it mm. uh, but it's also having a relationship with Jesus it's not just using his name like a, a magic word like Shazam it's actually understanding that Jesus is alive and he died on the cross and that um, through his power and his Holy Spirit, he can heal. Um, so it's not just using a code word or a name like be healed in Jesus' name. It's actually having a relationship and understanding that Jesus is alive and he heals and having faith that he will do that. And Babo, just give us some examples of when you pray for adults for healing. I remember when I'm younger, when I was younger, I walked into the canteen area and I felt Jesus telling me one of the lunch ladies had a sore back or something. So I knocked on the door, they let me in, the bell rang, so I was kind of freaking out trying to get to class, but first I calmed down, walked in there and I said, do, any, do you guys have a back problem or, some, or something wrong with your leg or something? And one of them said, oh yes, I have a back problem and it's very hard to sleep. And I said, okay, would you like me to pray for you? And she said, okay and i did and she was amazed on what happened and then if, and when i got home pa told me that he that um because i husband. Went, her no um pa told me that her daughter one of the one lady's daughters came in and said my my mother had a special visitor today and she was healed isn't that wonderful now, now, now tell us about some of the children you've prayed for at school in your neighborhood as well. Mm. Um, I have prayed for many children. I remember once there were a lot of kids were getting needles, and around the area where they got the needle, it was always hurting, and some kids had gotten bruises and cuts. And I had said, "If you guys are feeling any pain, come to me, and I can pray for you." So a lot of kids kept on coming, and I kept on praying for them. They kept on going around spreading the word. I came and prayed for them as well. And there was this one special kid who I prayed. <coughs> Yeah, he became sort of the person I teach about God. And so you're actually teaching someone else about how to pray for the sick, about Jesus. That is exactly right. I started teaching the same kid how to pray to God and how to pray for the other sick kids or hurt kids. Um, and yeah, so I still see him around sometimes. And so, so what do your teachers think about pray, you praying at school for the sick children? Well, one of the teachers, she doesn't, she isn't at the school anymore. Um, she used to try and stop me. She'd say, Bo, no one else believes in this, so stop. You're trying to push your beliefs onto other kids. Stop it. And I kept on doing it, and she would say, um, stop, and she'd start get, to get more and more furious every time I did it. And I kind of can't find that funny now because she tried to stop me from my beliefs that she didn't believe in. She didn't know if anyone else believed in it. She just said no one else does because she didn't. And, and so what happened after that? Um, even though she told you that you, you shouldn't pray for the sick children, you kept praying, didn't you? Well, I did stop for a little bit because I was like a kid that listened to the teachers and thought. One day in my head, it just clicked that she had no idea what she's talking about. 
she didn't know that God is real. So I started praying for the sick children again. I started doing all this just then like a week after her telling me to stop. And yeah, so from that day on, and yeah. Yeah, and I, I remember a couple of years ago, I came to your dad's church or your church. We had a healing meeting. You actually were there praying for me on the prayer line. That was Easter. That was great, wasn't it? You were there praying with your granddad. Mm -hmm. And there's an exciting thing to to have um, Bo pray for me. And God was healing people and setting people free. It's really exciting, Bo. And Bo, how old are you now? Um, I am turning 13, so at the current age, I'm 12. And I started when I was eight. Yep, so four years ago. And um, John, just talk about you know where Bo is, just the town, and that's where your ministry started. Yeah, well, what's interesting is, is my healing ministry be began at the Outback Town small little place in Catherine um, many, many years ago. In the Northern Territory. In so Northern for Territory. people from overseas, that's the remote northern part of Australia, very arid, dry yeah. sort of desert lands. It's about 10,000 people. It's a, it's a very remote area. And it's where a lot of Indigenous people, um, uh, Aboriginal yeah. communities live too. Yeah. And so what's interesting is, um, is, is my son and his family live there. So, so Bo began his healing ministry in the very same place. Pretty amazing, isn't it? This is along the bloodline. <laughs> yeah, and Bo, you, you're saying you, you've got a, you're saying you want to train other children to pray for the sick. That's a very wonderful thing because it's not just God using us to pray for the sick, but God wants to use us to encourage others and teach others that they can be used of God too. What do you think about that? Um, I think that that kids should start realizing because I didn't realize at first. I was thinking I'm going to pray for when I first did it. Um, I'm going to pray for this kid who was at my house at the time and he got hurt, he fell out of a tree. I prayed for him, the pain was gone and he he actually started calling me healer from that day and I feel like kids should realise that no matter what, God will use them as I've said it so many times, God will use them in many different and amazing ways. Guys, do you think we should wrap up the chat maybe with um, maybe Bo leading prayer for encouragement and boldness that's on both of you for anyone else who might be watching this and they have got that passion to pray or uh, and so they want that same boldness and that anointing yeah. so that you pray for those two things that they would also be used by God and um, yeah. and you, uh, the, the Holy Spirit would come on them and, and strengthen and give them that gift of healing and, too. And so, so Bo, you, you, uh, if you just speak to the people, encourage them, that praying for the sick, enough that you, you can lead them in a prayer that God to use them. How would you like to do that? We'll you, just pray for them for that. You speak okay. to the people listening. And you just, just talk to them first, encourage them first, and pray after that. You, you tell them God can use them both. So as Poppy was saying, God can use you, no matter your age, size, heck. On YouTube, you can search up three-year-old preach, three preacher. So pretty much someone who should barely be able to know words, preaches the gospel. So if a three-year-old can preach and an eight-year-old, like I was, can heal, then imagine what you could do. God wants to use you. He just wants you to open up your eyes and see what you can do. Okay, now let me use pray a prayer of impartation for those listening who want, who want to be used to pray for the sick in Jesus' name. You, you pray, Joe, Bo, for them now. Lord, for those who are listening and those who are watching, I pray that they can will know that no matter what, if they have a disability, God will use them. And I pray that they realize God will use them. I pray that they are humble and I pray that you give them the boldness to preach. And I pray that whatever way that you want to use them, I pray that you use them in that way. And I pray that you make sure they do not go off track. I pray that you make sure that their eyes will be open. And I pray that you make sure that they will see the power that God has and I pray that you make sure that they know how to preach and speak and talk about you in such wonderful ways Lord in Jesus name we pray amen amen now, but there's obviously people out there who are probably sick who need healing maybe you can say a prayer for all those who are suffering and maybe you can name some of the pain or illnesses and and and, and, and lead us in a prayer of faith for healing for all those people listening right now, you're gonna pray a prayer of healing for them now. All right. So to all of you who are injured, sick, have many different diseases, those who are disabled and cannot walk, those who are blind, 
I pray that God makes sure that they can see again. Those with cancer, I pray that you heal their cancer. Those with massive tumors, massive tumors, I pray that you get rid of their tumors. And people with any heart disease or lung disease or anything that it could kill, potentially kill them, I pray that you heal them in Jesus' name right now, we pray. I pray that you heal them right now, 100%. No more of their disease, of their lung cancer, of their anything. I pray that you get rid of all of it and I pray that you keep a nice healthy body there. I pray that you keep absolutely everyone there who is hurt or in danger or absolutely anything. I pray that you save them and I pray that you get rid of their diseases. I pray that you heal them 100%. Those with COVID-19, I pray that you heal them and I pray that you get rid of any disease that they have. I pray that you absolutely heal them from all diseases, Lord. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. And you know it's amazing. I've, I've actually seen Bo in action. I remember going out with his dad and his mum, and um, and I told him I'd go for a little walk. And we were at a shopping centre in Darwin, and I came back, and there was Bo. He was standing aside from his parents, and he's talking to this older man and his son, and I could see he's talking about Jesus to them, and. I, uh, and you know, it's amazing how you, you you go up to adults and you just talk to them about Jesus, don't you, Bo? And it's, it's amazing you've got that, that Holy Ghost boldness. And it's wonderful that you can talk to adults like that and, and children. It's a very special gift in your life. Sometimes I feel like I blink out and God's just making me say these words without me even realizing. I'll say things without realizing that I'm saying them and God's just in my, God's just in my heart telling me to say these things and to the part where it's just God speaking through me. That's about it. Yeah, you know, but I want to encourage listeners that, that um, I came to, to, to Bo's church four years ago and uh, to see the family and, and I was preaching there and I, and I never laid hands to impartation, impartation for Bo. Bo sat in the front seat and saw people get healed and heard me preach the gospel. And in your heart, you decided you wanted to be like me, didn't you? Like Poppy, you want to pray for the sick and have God use you. And so, without laying hands, you began healing meetings and praying for the sick the very next weekend, didn't you? Mm. So, amazing, you decided just to do it. And so, I encourage you if God can use Bo, God can use me, God can use you. And, and maybe you're a dad or grandparents, God can use your children as well. And so, we just want to say, God bless you and thanks for tuning in. And the greatest thing is to know Jesus, who's King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and He is the healer. So, God bless you.